Hi everyone, my name's Emily and I'm the product expert for Affinity Publisher. So today I'm going to take you through some really interesting stuff about typography. There's going to be stuff in there for everyone, so whether you've used typography for a long time or you're just starting out with typography or Affinity Publisher. I'm going to be taking you through how to also design a restaurant menu and this is a really great example when you need to use typography at its absolute best. What I'm going to take you through is other things as well, like colour palettes, guides manager, textiles manager. I'm also going to talk to you a lot about how I choose my fonts and how I research them in advance before a design. So this uh, hopefully will be really interesting. So first of all, I'm just going to show you um, what I've been working on so far and where I've got to. So this is a restaurant menu for a restaurant called Cleveland. And um, it's fascinating because they basically change their menu every quarter, which is a massive task. Um, and their menu design is completely different. So the restaurant was originally established in the 1960s. So this is why we've got this playful, really bright, vibrant colour coming out. And this particular menu um, is based on seafood. And as you can see, they they really want to put out there that they've been basing things on a lot of like playful flavours. So... We're going to be using a lot of colour in this design. So what I'm going to do now is just take you through the actual layout. So um, this is what we call a great hierarchy. So we've got the main titles here in a bold text. And if you think of something like um, a magazine or a newspaper, for example, a lot of you'll know, obviously, the, the big heading at the top, the subheading and the body text is where most of the article text is. It's not too similar for, for this, actually. So you've got your main heading here, subheading, your your name of your article, if you like, and the description. So we've got the, um, the food course, the food name, description, wine. As you can see, it follows that uh, really great hierarchy. So that's what we want to do now. So I'm going to take you through the stages of actually creating a main menu. So this is just the chef's menu here. So like um, the first, first, second main and dessert, which is chosen by the chef. And then you've got your wine menu here, again, following the same similar hierarchy. So let's go ahead and start up a new document. And this one is going to be pretty big. So we're going to want to go for 160 by 340. Keep it at 300 DPI. So... Uh, high resolution for print, keep it portrait as well, stick in millimetres. Um, I'm not going to be adding any imagery into this um, design, it's purely just uh, graphics that I've made in Affinity Designer, so I'll show you how to import them a little bit later. Only one page with a master attached, no facing pages, uh, we'll keep it, actually we'll change it to RGB and I'll explain why in a moment. And we want to do something with the margins. So make sure it's not linked here. Let me change this to 15 and 15 for the right. And the top will have as 40 and the bottom will have as 25. And we'll change the bleed to 5 mil. Create. Perfect. So this is our... Um, basic layout here and I'm just going to go in and uh, put in a baseline grid so we'll pop this so this is great so this has been uh, kept from setup when I created these are the menus later so we want to start it on the actual where the margin starts here but we want to offset it to three and the reason I want to offset it to three points is so we have basically a line running across to help me with the hierarchy um, and that'll just snap, which is great. Um, a really interesting tip for you guys as well. Um, I don't know whether a lot of you in the past have had like your baseline grids like really bright, um, so a little bit like this. But um, if you are seeing like lines on the walls after you've been designing for a couple of hours without a break, which I don't condone, um, I suggest probably what you need to do is turn the opacity down and actually make it a little bit off colour, um, so more black than kind of like blue or pink. Um, that'll stop you seeing lines across all your wall uh, or your wallpaper afterwards. 
Um, so we want to set the display threshold as 70% and that's that setup. So the next thing to set up as well is margins, uh, sorry, mar guides, uh, guides manager. And we want to add in four here. So I'll keep this as filled because we're going to be using this as a, as a guide for setting up our tables. And we'll go ahead and absolutely make, add some rulers as a, in as well to help us. Uh, there we go, just adding those in. Perfect, love it. Okay, so um, one of the main reasons I've used RGB for this is um, to get the actual colour of the background um, I'm going to pop in in a moment. You can't, I couldn't get that exact colour in a CYMK, so I need to use an RGB swatch. Um, this afterwards will, will transfer this to a transparent background because the paper that we're going to be printing it on is going to be really bright so what what I need to do basically is marry up the colour of the typography we're going to be putting in to the exact colour swatch of the paper that I've been able to pin pick it to so that's why we're going to be using RGB for now so I've preset that um, palette up actually which is what you can see here in this uh, old document so I'm going to be just importing this now. So if we head to panel preferences, import that as just a document template. So this particular palette that we're importing will only live within this document. So when we open it, it will be there. So let's just go and grab that. Um, palette I made earlier. Great. And then here we go. So we'll make sure we're in our master page. And um, we'll just add a box in. Make sure we're on the bleed line and we'll drag it down. Just like so. So we'll change the colour to the background swatch here. We'll go to the layers and I'm just going to name that as uh, BG for background. And then we'll head back into our pages. So as you can see, if people aren't familiar with working with masters, masters are basically objects that you put on a page that are secure um, but you can also apply masters to loads of different pages so it's really handy especially when if you're using like if you design like a book or a magazine it's really quite handy with that um, so the next thing I'm going to do um, is actually transfer my marquee tool because um, with this marquee tool it comes as default as a scrubby scrubby marquee tool and I, I don't prefer that so um, this will be good if anybody just prefer the same preference so we'll just search that so it's fine and there we go so we'll just turn off scrubby zoom here and now you can see that when we zoom in it just appears like that so that's how I would prefer that um, which is great so now we're just gonna bring in all of the elements that we've got at the top of our design here so if we go in and find our branding I used earlier so as you can see in Affinity Publisher you can actually bring in designer and um, you can also bring in um, the photo app uh, files as well um, so it's really great as it's a shared file format you can transfer between the two so I can just click and drag this straight from the uh, Affinity Designer document um, straight into my new design and copy and paste it here which is brilliant so we'll just move this up here um, and we'll move this in just like so brilliant so the next thing I want to do is just create a complementary colour um, for the background now here's a little bit of um, advice when picking colour for typography so with this, I've already considered um, my target audience. So the target audience specifically for this restaurant is like younger adults to a slightly older population. Um, and we need to just be wary, obviously, of people that might be wearing glasses, the environment. Um, so now we're talking about medium. So it's always good to consider target audience, the medium. And the medium in this case, is go it's going to be printed. 
Um, it's not going to be a uh, glossy print paper. Um, it's just going to be um, normal on card. So it's a throwaway menu as it's only um, going to be here for a quarter. So we want to save some expense there. It's also not going to be laminated either as it's going to be in a book cover. Um, so what we need to do is think about where the lights are in the restaurant. Um, if it's daylight, it's quite bright and there could be light coming in reflected from the window hence not using a glossy print or laminate um, even if we're in the evening there could be an overlight head where you get a reflection of gloss so again that's why we're not using anything glossy um, but we also want to make sure when using this uh, ridiculously bright color paper background for now you want to make sure people um, with slight um, reading disabilities can read the text the last thing you want to do is to get customers coming into a restaurant um, and asking for a, a bigger print menu um, when the, the original design isn't right. So what we've got here is if you're designing on a, on a bright background, pick a good contrasting colour, something quite strong, so um, wider text uh, with a heavier weight or a bigger text. Um, the minimum text size I'm going to go for is 8 points. So if I show you what eight points looks like on this design and we'll zoom out and I'll show you what it looks like. So if I just put a uh, text here, so that's 10, we'll change it to eight. There we go and we'll command and zero. And this is going to be look, this is what it's going to look like without construction mode on. So that's really easily read. Um, another thing to do as well is obviously make sure you always get your um, your design printed off roughly first even though if you've got like a cheap printer at home uh, or in an office or a studio make sure you print it proof everything and make sure you give it to someone and check that they can read it um, again you don't want to be uh, seeing people like zooming in and out or having to put uh, glasses on with a magnifying glass that isn't going to be great so we know that eight point size is going to be our absolute minimum so that's brilliant that's set um so the next thing to talk about is uh let's have a look How, what font i'm actually going to choose for this design so as i said the the restaurant was established in the 1960s so how i went about researching that is using a website which i really love to use um called fonts in use so this is our color palette um, that I created earlier um, and we'll just go to fonts in use here. So this website's absolutely brilliant um, and I wish I, I knew about it when I was at university. Unfortunately, somebody told me about it five years ago and it's absolutely changed the way that I work rather than going to the library and getting books out and that sort of thing. This website is a great resource for anything typography, anything um, like old resources and that sort of thing so if I type in 1960 here um, 1960 for anybody that doesn't know was uh, the main part of the pop art movement uh, hence why I'm using lots of bright colors and that sort of things to go and complement the playful flavors they're going to be using so as you can see we've got a lot of historical references um, and if anybody doesn't know me that well um, let you into a little secret and um, this is my favorite typeface of absolute all time and um, Futura is brilliant it comes in numerous amount of weights um, and this is the actual design that got me loving Futura funnily enough um, there's always a question actually that a lot of people ask for advice on um, how many um, typefaces or fonts do you use in a, in a design before it starts looking weird um, I would say three or less. Don't use any more than three um, unless you need something for a quote or a disclaimer, something like that. But try and uh, challenge yourself to use three or less. Um, it just looks a lot less clustered and that sort of thing. Um, and these sort of designs, especially the one from the Volkswagen, is it's only using one typeface, but it's using different weights. So it's using a bold, it's using a light. Um, so just think about that because it's um it's a gr it's a great 
great challenge to set and a great habit to get into really makes your work look really professional so you've got other things like the dr zeus books the john f kennedy campaign that has used futura and franklin so all of these sorts of things so um go on this website have a little look um it's a really great really great tool to use so let's go and find our tag here brilliant so i went on here the other day and made my absolute choices for typography i'm only going to use two typefaces so I set myself as a challenge so i'm going to use this one here that i can't pronounce if i click on that it will give me some information so slightly before the 1960s but this definitely would have influenced things so let's use that as like uh, the description um, it's kind of a halfway in between serif and sans serif so if anybody doesn't know the difference um, serif uh, fonts are the ones that the little serifs on the end here um, and sans serif fonts are like future where they don't have any accents on the on the typefaces so we'll use this one now add a little bit of class to the design as you can see future was quite big uh, during that time um, and I'm going to use Americana as well for our main typeface, the one that's going to set our design up. And it will also tell us loads of other things that the uh, this typeface was famous in, so Stevie Wonder album, uh, all these sorts of things. And it's smack bang in the middle of the uh, the time that we've been trying to reference. So let's use that. I might. Um, edit the font as well uh, like I did in the previous design and um, this font is quite stretched out so we might want to use something like a horizontal scale to uh, adjust the typeface so if we go and drag a box here I'm just going to grab some copy um, from my my list here and uh, we'll paste that in there we'll find American so if we go to our recent nothing in there used um, so let's find that instead um, as you can see I've got quite a lot of uh, typography and I won't take you through all of it because there's a lot um, but if anybody wants any um, any help with picking stuff let me know um, but while I'm going through this tutorial um, you guys can have a chat as well and um, tell each other what uh, type typefaces that you really like and are really passionate about and um, there's going to be some time later when i'm going to be filling in tables um, and that might get a little bit tedious so it'll be great for you to you guys to get to know each other in the chat um, so if i go to our character panel here and i'm just going to play around with the horizontal scale here so you can see this is naturally how the typeface is supposed to sit but I want to just um, make this a little bit slimmer so we'll adjust that to 90 and we'll just double check it with 80% I think that's slightly too uh, kind of squished looking use it for 90% we'll also put in tracking here so for anybody who doesn't know what tracking is um, it's a great place for me to demonstrate what this is so tracking is the space between each letters so if I put five in there uh, and I'll exaggerate it just for now so you can see the space between each character um, adjusts so I want to just have a bit more space in here and the reason I want to have a little bit more space again is so people can read it clearly um, always think that the closer things are together the more difficult it is for people to read um, so play around with that if you're doing things that are going to be um, useful like menus um, instruction manuals always have a little bit tr more tracking in and um, it makes things easy to read um, and it really slows down the reading as well and um, then we also have the kerning and the kerning is basically space between two characters so if I uh, drop down here as you can see as you as you go down the menu in affinity publisher it will actually stretch it out for you and um, so that's minus 50% and if we put it up to 50% you can see that it's adjusted the space here this is really great if you get any typefaces um, naturally that don't have correct spacing 
so you can go in and adjust the kerning and it will sort that out for you um, you also have the leading as well which is in your paragraph panel so that's just here and if you had two lines of text that would adjust the space between the, the two lines of text there um, but I'm not going to be using that for now because I've um, used my baseline grid instead so that's a little bit about that um, another thing actually I'll mention is if you get any typefaces that don't come with like an italic weight for example you can go and use this um, button here so if we put in like 10% you'll see that it will make it italic and shift it from the baseline um, but I don't want to do that because I've got an italic option but that is just um, a great tip to be able to use so what we'll do now um, I'm just going to just show you how to create a colour cord now um, earlier when I was talking about making sure we had a colour that complemented the background so um, like these designs here the colour complements um, almost like a two-tone effect but it actually works um, so if we right click on here and go create colour cord well, there's loads of different options to do here um, and I go I haven't got time to go through all of them um, but you're more than welcome to ask questions at the end of the chat and I'll stay around and I can uh, type it all up for you and go through it um, tints are basically uh, going from this colour lighter so to white um, shades is to go to, to black so getting darker to black and tones are going to grey so everything to get to grey basically um, so I want to create a darker darker colours and you'll see it will lay out those swatches in our palette just here so we'll click on this one that's a little bit too dark for me so I'm just going to double click um, and I'm just going to adjust this so if I make it a little bit lighter I keep checking the swatch here we'll try it about there see how that looks so that doesn't look too bad actually let's just check that out again so we probably want a little bit more red I would probably say so let's bring it here yeah and I like that it looks looking good okay so if we just right align this move it here and you can see it's snapping to the baseline grid keeping it nice and spaced out um, we need to put our graphic here as well so if we go and grab that designer document um, where's my graphics ah there we go right in front of me we don't want to convert it to spreads um, and here it is so we highlight this copy it bring it back in what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my layers panel now and just deselect the text group it so I'll just call this 182 dots brilliant and then we'll just um, adjust the colour so we'll use our darker colour for this and then we'll select our dots make this a little bit lighter oh maybe in the middle yeah that works okay so I group those together now so this number is significant to the design um, as it's the amount um, of quarterly menu changes they've done so this is number 82 um, which is quite quite a lot of different menus to for people to design and redesign the food and that sort of thing so it's a, it's a challenge but you know what it's great for, for people like me who want to experiment and stuff like this so best of both worlds I suppose so that's great so if I put another text box in here and we'll go and put our copy in again there we go great so if we go and add this as a textile now so we go to textile 
I'm just going to get rid of all of the defaults. So these are all the defaults you'll have in your textile panel. Um, and you can do that just here. There we go. Add this as a paragraph style. So the main difference between a paragraph style and a character style is for things like this where you've got a big group of text where you need to adjust all sorts of things like the tracking, the paragraph options, whether you want it left or right aligned or centre aligned, whether you want to attach it to the baseline grid, justification, all those extra options get attached to the paragraph style. If you're going to use a character style, I suggest you just use those for things like numbers um, or like alternative styles. So let's say we want to add just food in italic, for example. That would be um, an individual character style, if you like. So um, experiment around with that, see how you get on. Um, so if we call this title, there we go. It's just there. So if we just highlight this, select our title, and I'm just going to make an alternate. So I'm going to call this title left. So I'm going to change this to a left alignment. But you can see is um, because we've updated the character style, uh, sorry, the paragraph style, it's got a little plus here. So we can actually just update this and it will set just like that in the preview of the text styles panel. It will sit on the left. And that is the same if you change colour. Every time you get that little plus at the top, it will be it will mean it's been adjusted and it'll ask for confirmation whether you want to update it. Just hit that button or the character style button. You can do that there or you can do it on the, the panel there as well. Brilliant. So we'll just... Uh, so if we go and change our capitalization, we change this to title case here. There we go. We'll just double check how this is laid out on the design before. So if we move this in. Perfect. Check how that looks. Great. Uh, command zero to zoom out again. It's looking great, but I think what we need to do is update the weight so it's a heavier weight. Uh, again, like I said, titles and things like that, always have it heavier than the body text, not the other way around. Um, it would look a little bit peculiar if it was the other way around, for sure. Okay, so we'll, look, we'll uh, do this one as well. Brilliant. And we'll change our graphic of our branding to this colour. So I'm going to change this to a global colour swatch now. So what global means basically is, uh, say you have uh, one swatch. And if you're having a lot of different typography or lines in a particular colour, it's great to change it global because if you want to change that colour slightly, when you update the colour, um, if I show you this by just adjusting these, if I adjust this colour, let's say, to something completely different, to grey, you'll see it'll update all of those straight away. Um, so, so it's a really great uh, tool to be able to use that. So if we just back up and change it back, there we go. So as you can see, it's... Um, it's a great tool to be able to use and it really speeds things up, especially if you wanted to change the colour throughout the whole design. Um, so the shortcut to go from construction mode to preview mode is just um, Control w It's the same on Windows and Mac, uh, if anybody's wondering. So that's looking quite great. Um, I'm happy with the spacing as well. So if we just go and add in a line here, and you can see it's popped up with our dotted line that we had in our previous design, but I'll show you how to create this. So if you have to dotted lines like this, I'll pop one in. So you can see it's just adjusting to our rulers with that green and red line down the side. Um, there we go. So if I wanted to just change this back to a solid line, for example, you can change the weight of the line here. So let's say we want to change it to three. 
Um, then we can also choose whether we want it to be round at the end, squared or just a solid line. You can also choose whether you want the join to be rounded or straight or with a little indent inside. And you can also choose where you want the node to sit on the actual line, whether you want it to be further in, exactly flush to the, the stroke or just in the middle. So that's a really great handy tool. But if we change this to dashed, um, as you can see, it's filled in all of my bit more information. But um, if I have this a straight line, as you can see, if I just zoom in a little bit more, it's put in a straight dashed line. But what I really want to do is have like almost dots. So that's why I've picked the rounder tool. So I hope that helps if anybody's uh, trying to do that sort of thing. Um, it's a really handy tool, that um, Stroke Styles panel. Awesome. Okay, so that's looking great. So let's add in our first title. Let's so we'll add this in here. So this is going to be our appetizers. There we go. And if we just go and put this on a on a style here. There we go. You can see if we have that uh, just on the baseline grid, it'll disappear. So just drag down your text style. So if we go and adjust this to have it as extra bold. Just like that, and I'm just going to update the character style and, and add in a new one called Course. Oh, sorry. There we go. So that's all sorted. Oh, let's just update that. Perfect. Okay, so that's great. Now, then, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, give you a really good tip, um, which I wish somebody had told me. So Tables aren't just for maths, basically. Um, so if you're putting tables into a publisher, um, don't worry, they're not just for like dates and adding in like um, like annual, putting them in annual reports and things like that. Use them to lay out your text as well because it's a really great tool and I'm actually going to use it to actually help me create the hierarchy um, in this restaurant menu. Um, so please just go and have a play around with it. It's a really great um really great design feature and um, so if we just pop that on the bottom line and we'll push put two in for now and you'll see that that'll just stretch it out and it'll tell you the the width and the height as well we can easily get rid of the columns i want to keep one just as like a makeshift gutter if you like so we'll just move this along just here so this is at like our spacing block, if you like. So I'm just going to keep that like that. Um, also for now, um, I'm going to keep these black lines on the actual um, uh, sorry, table um, because I want to be able to see the difference between the baseline grid and the table. So if I go and get my table panel here. There we go. And I also want to go and grab our format. Okay, so if we make a format here of it all in between. Great, perfect. And we'll change the stroke as well and the inserts. Perfect. We don't want to ignore the baseline grid. We want to keep that the same. Brilliant. So that's all set up. The table table formats is always like the the textiles, if you like. If you add in a, a new a new textile or a table format, you can create loads of different formats and keep that within your Affinity Publisher um, application. And then it's uh, just really quick to be able to click on them and change the whole entire look um, of the table. Um, so let's go and grab, um, I'm just going to get rid of this actually, create a text box. Well, what I prefer to do is actually drag the copy in, into Publisher section by section instead of having to flip between um, the text in different programs every now and again. It just makes things a lot, lot quicker. So 
looks great. Okay, so if we change this to eight, just so it's on the minimum, and we can see everything in one go. Great. So we want to add the name in here. So if we use Command and X, that'll cut. And we're just going to create some textiles now while we're going through it. And then later, I'm going to show you how to, you can change um, textiles in a big bulk of text by selecting them in the in this table. Um, so if we go back to our recent column here and move this to bold, and then we'll go and set our um, horizontal scale and our tracking and our colour to the global swatch here. So we'll just get rid of the outline. Okay. And we'll add in our textile, so we'll call this food. Great. And then we'll add in our description. Oh, my apologies. I'm just going to put in another another column in here just by dragging them down. There we go. That's a bit better. So now we can just we know where our baseline grid and where everything sits. The reason why we want to have them on uh, different rows is so I can help you change the uh, the textiles later a little bit quicker. Um, so if we go and find the typeface I can't pronounce, here we go, but I can spell it. I want a regular here. I'm going to change this. I'll leave that, yeah, I'm going to leave that at eight. I'm also going to set this to ten. Yep, so you can see the, the hierarchy now. So this is 12, this is 10 points, and this is 8 points. So we'll set that as our description. Cool. Perfect. And then we want our price just near the description. So if we set this as a paragraph style, because we want to make sure that we've got our alignment options in there as well. So we've called this food price and we want to base this on the description but what I want to do is change the alignment to the right hand side so if we update that and change this to 8 brilliant Okay, so that's all laid out. So don't worry, all these uh, all these back lines I'll change from here later. Get rid of this now. This is where um, I want you guys actually just to have a little discussion, um, and I'll have a little look for the final design. Um, what weight you would prefer the course? to be on do you want it on extra bold or do you want it on bold um what looks better to you i know what i would pick um but i want to see what see what you guys come up with um so if we change that back to construction mode add um space uh, name description wine There we go. Okay. So we'll start adding this in now. So bear with me if this uh, feels like it's a little bit tedious, but this is uh, part of the process. So I'm hoping most of you wanted to watch this. There's uh, not a greater feeling when you really get into the groove of it and everything starts coming together quite quickly. Um, the thing that I'm most looking forward to showing you guys actually is how uh, I insert the graphics from Designer 
it's a really it's a really great easy tool and i'll be showing you how to use the palettes and that sort of thing later as well um going to be really really handy oh that's what happens when you don't don't move around objects there we go pounds so if I highlight all of this here and just put on my textile that automatically change it all to that and just so I don't have to do that a little bit later but I'll show you the different um, how to add in our, our wine description in a little bit so I want to have this as five so we're nearly there now Space, title, description, wine. I don't normally talk like this out loud when I'm designing. I'm normally in my head. So if you if you guys are finding it annoying when I'm counting, I'm just doing it for for your benefit. I'm definitely not doing it for mine. Let's have a look. Some great wine selection here just make sure that we delete in the box right now that's ready to go let's create quickly just a textile um for this wine menu so if we go and choose italic it's on eight already make sure the colors set awesome I'm just going to move this round for one second. Perfect. So if we add in our kerning again, just so it's a little bit more spaced out. And then we go and add in our paragraph style. We'll call that wine description. Perfect. And then we want to have an alternate. So that's going to be wine price. But we want to have this on uh, right alignment. Sorry, there was a pause there. I was trying to figure out which was right or left. Um, let's have a look. Great. Brilliant. Okay. So let's just change these to the wine. The wine um, paragraph style. One, two, three. That's right, that's right, that's right, and that's right. Okay, so if we um, just click on our, on our cell here. And just hit command and it will select the different cells as you can see so we change this to the wine description we can do the same with the description of the food so if we change oh uh, there we go description and then we want the food title so let's we'll change that to food so as easy as that there is your first course done and we'll change the uh, the strokes off the the table in a little bit. But what we need to do now is just add in a key for the wine, because um, we haven't told um, the reader what is different between this italic and what this regular text is here. So if I put in, let's have a look. If I put in. wines so that'll tell them that all the wine is going to be in italic so that's the price and the description and also that it comes in 175 mil and we'll right align that as well and keep it the sign same as the wine price 
brilliant okay so what we're going to do now is we're just going to drag uh, sorry select some of the things that we need um a really a really handy tip i've got for you actually which is probably the most significant thing with typography and i know it sounds really simple but read the copy or the text that you get before you start making design design decisions so for example if you're reading if you're creating an article about like um a fun uh type of like interior design chairs for example or like bubbles or something like that you want the typography to match that you wouldn't want it quite elegant um you'd want it quite fun bold uh, and elaborate if you get a for example like um a copy that's for an annual report obviously that would need to be quite straight um, and elegant and easy to read so um whatever your copy portrays it will portray a certain mood and it's kind of our job as typographers to get that across to the reader um and the more that you start experimenting with typography you'll realize that actually we have a really big job to play on that sort of thing um if you add in a fun uh, you know when you see restaurants that have got like um like bubbly text for example like Co comic sans but it's actually like a really nice elegant restaurant where you'd wear a dress or wear a suit to in an evening i know that and um, just from my experience i'd probably walk straight past it because it'd seem a little bit more casual um, but if you want to go to a nice formal dinner you probably wouldn't go there because of that branding is used incorrectly for the typography and um, so just think about that and um, there's uh, quite a lot of different resources like a lot of books that you can look up and um, this information um so yeah it's, it's definitely um something that has helped me over the years so um go and have a little look or ask me some more questions um at the end of this session and i'll uh, i'll answer them for you um so if we just duplicate and move this down so we want to have one two and a bit of spaces perfect so now we want to move this as main course let's have a look okay so let's go and grab our other copy in oh you accidentally have your trackpad and your keyboard close together that's what happens <laughs> in a text box here and move this to eight points okay so if we uh, just select all of that and then we'll start copy and pasting in here going to do now is we're going to add in another another row here just so we can add in our wine so this is 18 and this is 4 So I think this one is going to go over our designated space. There we go. So um, another great thing about using tables is that it will just drop down into the next line, but it will keep our baseline grid. Um, so it won't overpass. And that's one of the reasons why I put this extra column in here as like a gutter. So it wouldn't um, basically, so it doesn't have enough space. So it has enough space to have the difference between the pricing and the food names and descriptions um, so I'm glad that's in there so what we'll do is we'll move this move this down and this is going to be seven Okay. Oh. 
so that is going to be 22 and 3 So um, other parts of this menu I'll be creating after this session um, will be things like a dietary um, grid and that sort of thing um, as they're obviously really important. Other things I'll also be designing are things like um, notepads for the waiters and waitresses to take down the orders um, which will be good so that I need a space title description so on to the last one now everyone so I think this one might go over as well yep but that's okay I want to have that 18 so I'm just going to adjust these Perfect, okay. So let's go and put our textiles in here. So let's grab this panel out and make it bring it a little bit closer actually to work with. Descriptions. Wine description. Oh, missed one out. My apologies. I'm going to turn this to 10 points. Just update that. You'll see it's updated all of the other um, text. That's got the textile adjusted to. My bad for not updating the character style to the text size. <laughs> Food price. Wine. It's pretty much kept the brilliant. Okay, I'm on to the last one. So again, if we highlight all of this here, Alt and Shift to duplicate and to keep in the aspects we want. One, two. And a bit perfect. This is going to be our dessert course. And we'll go and grab in our last bit of copy. This sounds very nice. this into white so we can actually see it okay. 8 points again brilliant okay So that has no wine, so we'll just get rid of that row. And this is twelve pounds. Oh, it does. My apologies. Let's back that up. That's five pounds.
that's 16 pounds. Wine in. Three pounds. That is a steal of a wine price. So now we can move this. Brilliant. Okay, a few more left, guys. This one doesn't have a wine option, so I'm guessing you just pick whatever you like, and that is £19. So, if we delete all of these, and then we'll go and pop our textiles in. So wine price, perfect, food price, definitely right, name that food, description, wine, there we go, so that's all of our input in. Brilliant, so the next thing we need to put is just the disclaimer. So if I bring down the same heading here, I'm going to estimate it's going to take up about two or three lines, let's just overcompensate for now. We want, we can preset the textile for when we input it here here's the disclaimer which has got a typo in it brilliant sometimes no matter how much you um gets people to prove they always always miss something okay right now to change the strokes on the text. So if we're going back to find our panel and we can take off the strokes here and we are left with nothing and then if we just do the same for these awesome Nearly there, we're nearly on to adding the graphics in now, brilliant. So we sit back and enjoy that. Great, so you can see it's got a really clear hierarchy. Everybody knows what is what and where everything's supposed to be. So now we can add in our graphics. So this is our menu, this is main menu, here we go. and then we'll copy and paste it in here. This is where our colour chords are going to come into it again. So I'm just going to space these out how, how I want them. Um, the whole idea behind these uh, little bits of graphics actually was um, for it to look like the... You know what the, um, the chefs do to add like decoration onto the plate where they dribble like food around it or you get like a wine stain on the table cloth? Um, that's what they're supposed to look like. Um, so it's really... I quite like them. I think they add, again, that pop of um, playfulness that we need. Um, so we'll flip that round. Another thing as well, 
that hierarchy gives you obviously is to take your reader on a journey so we know that the uh, the main eye catch and um, where we first get the the reader will be at the top as the bold text here so we know what menu number it is we know what food what they're actually going to be eating and then it takes us on a journey but with having these extra graphics in it will um it will help them notice certain things on the menu going through so for example we pop this one just down here so people can uh, people know that they'll have the disclaimer at the bottom uh, desserts are probably the m most uneaten things at the restaurant um, so we want to have a graphic near here as well um, and we want to obviously um, draw attention down from the text to the wine and the price uh, list here so if we go and add some more complementary colours in but this time we'll do it from the background colour so let's go and add in some tints some lighter ones. I'm going to show you how to add blend modes and stuff in a moment. But for right now, we'll move it a little bit further back just so we're not interfering with the text. There we go. Um, as a rule of thumb with me um, and just what I I tend to prefer, um, can you see how this is like crossing over text? If we were to zoom out, it does almost look like it's interfering and it's breaking up the, the text even more. So we want to try and avoid that as much as possible. Um, I don't tend to, to like that sort of thing. So that that sits there perfectly, nearly actually, let's change that. Brilliant, yeah, like that. I'm going to make this a bit bigger. I'm just going to adjust it. So if I hit A, that will bring our nodes up. The great thing about um, having the shared format um, between Affinity's Designer and all the other um, applications in the suite as well, so we have access to our studio link. So if you have Designer or Photo downloaded on your Mac or your PC, you can easily just switch to have other options. Um, so you see I've got all the more pen options, everything like that in Designer. If you have any photos that you want to edit as well, obviously you can jump into Photo and edit those. Um, but what we want to do now is we can actually just stay in Publisher because we already have a pen tool and as you can see I could just edit them um, I don't have to um, go into Designer to do this I can even add more nodes in if I wanted to so it's a really great um, tool that we're working with really handy especially when you've got me who's like a designer of multi multiple different disciplines um, so again, so if I add in a slightly darker colour, um, add in a blend mode, I have something like screen or, oh, maybe like that, we'll play around with the opacity, I'm not liking the shape, so we'll just trial and error in at this point. I'll make this a little bit smaller actually it's not taking up all of the design keep it away from the text as much as we can brilliant actually let's move this here grab that that graphic back in actually seal it from here okay let's make that adjustment again this is why it takes them so long sometimes for people to place stuff on images because They've got their own little uh, like quirks, like me, who's trying to avoid everything that uh, 
I want to let's bring that smaller and oh perfect yeah brilliant that works and we'll make this a little bit bigger just like that maybe bring the head down just to avoid the text there I quite like that flourish actually I'll add this a little bit lighter draw more attention to the disclaimer in the dessert and move it back okay and there we go everyone so that is um that is lots and lots of tips of you i do realize and i'm sure um, quite a few have got loads of questions so i'll stay around for a little while and i'll answer them in the chat um this video also will be uploaded um so put your your questions in the comments and i'll i'll answer them as soon as i can um but thanks for watching um i hope you've learned something new especially around typography and it encourages you to, to try some new skills out that you may or may not know before um so yeah thank you brilliant bye